Hello fellow YouTubers, welcome to the motherboards.org YouTube channel, take me to your leader. Welcome to Motherboards.org YouTube channel. Today, you guys have been asking for it, and now we've got it. Sandy Bridge is launched. Today, we're going to do the ASUS P8 P67 motherboard. So follow along as we go over the features of the board, the performance of the board, and then why at the end of the day, you should be wanting to buy this board. Right here in front of us, you can see the ASUS P8 P67 motherboard. Now, we're going to start at the top of the board. This board is based off the new P67 Express chipset. It features the 1155 ZIF socket, which supports the new second generation core CPUs, i7, i3, and i5. Going down the board, we have four DIMM slots, which can support up to 32 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. Currently, the 8 gigabyte sticks are not available, but they'll be on the market later on. Down here, we have all of our expansion slots for our inline cards. These two right here are both PCI Express 16X slots, but when you use them in a crossfire mode, they become 8X each. This one down here, the black one, this is a 4X PCI Express slot. We also have two standard old school PCI slots, as long as the new PCI Express 1X slots. So you've got quite a bit of expansion there to move around. Now you can see around the ZIF socket right here, there are some nice heat sinks and stuff like this. This may interfere with using some aftermarket heat sinks as it's a little large, but other than that, the design is, is pretty okay. Um, I like the fact that these two things are far enough apart, which gives your cards a little bit of space for breathing room if you're using them. So that's not too bad at all. Also down here, we have onboard reset and restart. So if you want to clear your CMOS or anything, you can do it right here on the board for those overclockers and stuff who do outboard stuff. This is pretty good. We've also got a couple of uh, USB headers. So if you want to use some external USB, you've got those right there. Over here, we have the timer clock. What this does when you're booting up your system, this gives you off a bunch of numbers. And if there's an error code, this thing will tell you by numerical order, which error code that you are getting. Now, some of the main features that, that, that these guys are pushing is this dual intelligent processor stuff. Now, this feature is an EPU and a TPU, and these are by, done by switches. The TPU, which is the Turbo B processor, is clicked on right here by a one-click thing. Now, this offers you one-touch overclocking or 0.1 increments in overclocking your CPU since Sandy Bridge is so particular. Now, over here, we have the EPU switch. This is the energy processing unit. What this does is this gives your board intelligent power. So what it does is it goes through your motherboard and it makes sure that things just running good. It adjusts your performance level and how much energy you're using. So it's kind of like a power saving type thing. It's pretty cool altogether. Now, this thing also features what's called DigiVRM. Now, DigiVRM is kind of like Dr. Moss that you've seen on the MSI boards. What this is, is a 16 plus two power conditioner. So this makes sure that all the power that's coming to your motherboard is coming to the motherboard very cleanly so that the board stays very powered and can last for a long time. Okay, so moving along, we see that we have four of these blue connections right here. Now, these are the standard SATA three gigabit connectors. We move on down here to the Intel P67. This is the six gigabit connector. And then at the end, we have the blue ones, which are the Marvell six gigabit connections. So we also have your 24 bit power here. And around the side, we have your additional eight pin power, which actually helps support the CPU. Taking a look at the rear IO, we have a standard PS2 legacy port. Then altogether, there are eight USB 2.0 ports on this board. These are these, these red ones right here, these ones right here, and these ones right here. Now, the blue ones, these are the new USB 3.0 ports. We also have two LAN ports. One is by the Realtek and one is by Intel. It suggests that if you're only going to use a single connection that you use this one, which is the Intel one. We also have eSATA. One's a standard eSATA and one's a powered eSATA port. The green one's the powered eSATA. I know it's a bit confusing because on most boards, when you see red, that means eSATA, but on this board, these are actually the USB ports. Here's also your Bluetooth connection. This is so all your Bluetooth device can be connected, such as the new uh, BT to go feature. I didn't really mention that, but there's a feature called BT to go. This is where you can actually take your phone and use it to control your motherboard, add music, connect to it, share information, or even overclock your system all through that. Now, as far as the sound goes, we have SBDIF and coaxial for your digital connections, or if you're using standard analog connections, the board features the Realtek ALC 
chipset which does uh, eight channel audio and features DTS for surround sound. So overall, there's a really good fleshed out rear eye on this board and it's just really nice. So once again, I'll just flip the board around, show you guys the board. You can see the design, this big ASUS heatsink down here. This covers the chipsets and keeps them running cool. I like the color. A lot of you guys have said that you're like sick of the blue color schemes, but you know, I, I think it's pretty nice. Red would be nice too, but, but other companies use that. But hey, here it is. I hope you guys liked it. Now we're gonna move on and show you how the performance of this board is. After seeing all the features that this motherboard has, you guys saw the layout of the board, how nice it is. Some of you may disagree about some of the board features uh, or some of the layout. You can't please everyone. Me, myself, personally, I think that for the $200 that you have to spend on this motherboard, that it has really good features. From its EPU features to its TPU features, to its power saving features. It's just a really good fleshed out motherboard. You know, the rear IO has so many ports on it that I don't even think anybody would have to go out and buy any kind of stuff to do it. And the new EFI BIOS, which is the extendable firmware interface, it's really cool. Being able to take your mouse and navigate through the BIOS is really cool. And now you can use any of those hard drives that are over three terabytes large, which before took a controller card. So at the end of the day, I say the new ASUS P8 P67 motherboard for two $200 is a serious editor's choice here on motherboards.org. Thanks for watching.